Welcome to part two, folks, talking about electronic drums. So in the second part, I promised I would show you how you can make your own electronic drums, triggers that is, that look like real drums and actually behave quite a bit like them in terms of response. So here's an example, all right? This is a little device I made uh, several years back. Finished in maple. This is a maple shell with a maple finish, natural maple. One of my favorites. Really like the way this looks. Um, mesh head. There's a rubber rim here. And there's a little isolation mount for it over here. Okay. Put it on your rack, whatever. Um, these are not that difficult to make. And you have lots of options. You know, I, I happen to like this natural uh, finish wood. Of course, you might prefer a wrap or something else. So maybe uh, you want to use a, a tint on it or something like that. Um, here's another one. This is a birch shell, which is a slightly darker finish. You probably can't see this too well, but it's a very subtle fade from dark to light to dark. Um, if the light's right, you can see it pretty good. But again, same sort of deal. All right. How is this done? How do we do this? Well, some of these things you're going to have to buy aftermarket. For example, you can buy the rubber rims. Um, there are different sources for mesh heads. This happens to be an original Roland V-Drums mesh head, but there are other ones out there. Okay. Um, the basic idea is you're going to get yourself a shell. Okay. So a shell, you know, just a bare shell like this. Okay. This happens to be um, a Keller shell. Keller Maple Shell. You can get these a couple different places. Um, Anderson Trading is where I got mine. They'll actually cut bearing edges for you. Okay. So you take this guy, size this out the way you want, right? Buy your lugs and so forth. There are various places. There was a place down in, I think, uh, uh, Pennsylvania, maybe West Virginia, where I got a lot of my hardware, lugs and so forth. You know, the lugs and so forth. Um, but you just want to finish this up the way you want, you know. I will suggest that if you like natural wood, don't stain it. Get aniline dye instead. You'll have a lot more control. It'll be much richer. The grain will come out better. All right. Works out really well. Now, once you've figured out where you're going to put on your... Uh, lugs and so forth so standard kind of drum making techniques for that all right um once you figure that kind of stuff out and you've got your rim and heads and everything the trick is dealing with the trigger itself right so i've mentioned this before you have these little piezoelectric triggers okay these guys um to go along with this you need a little foam cone that just barely just barely makes contact with the head okay and this is what that combo would look like All right so here's a, a cone and stuck to the bottom is a piezo transducer right now i happen to take the leads off i i when i would buy these i would buy them without the leads because these these are really fine they're very small so i like something a little heftier if you're not particularly good at soldering, you don't have a lot of experience, you might want to just leave these because you got to be careful when you solder to these piezo connectors. You know, the, the outer piece is easy, but the center piece is a little tricky. So you might want to just leave those on there. But in any case, you know, I like to keep things modular. So, you know, I crimp little ends on it and so forth. So essentially what happens is this goes in and it's kind of like, so here's your shell, right? This has to get positioned in such a way that it's just, I'm gonna exaggerate this, right? So it's like sticking out. So you wanna get this so that the height of this is just like in half a millimeter above this edge. So an easy way to do that is to just get a, some kind of straight edge, like maybe a level or something to go across here. And then you can just adjust this, the height of this so that it just comes above this edge. So it'll just barely make contact with the mesh head. So this has to sit on something, 
okay? Easiest thing to do there is to just get some kind of little spar, a little bar, okay? And what I have here, right, so here's this guy, right? So here's the inside of it. Try to bring this in a little bit. So there is this um, aluminum little U-channel, okay? And what I did, because this was a, a from scratch thing, I just sized it up using the, the uh, lug positions as sort of a double for this, right? So if you look in here carefully, um, you can see there are little tiny L brackets. If I can get the angle on this. There are little tiny L brackets, and there's little orange um, sort of rubber pieces that I put in there as sort of like a, a vibrational bushing, if you will, okay? So that, there, so that this bar is not directly connected to, to the, the lug hardware, right? So there's a little bit of isolation there. So I just position this in such a way that, um, with careful measurement, that the piezotransducer and the cone would just barely touch the surface, right? So that's it's a little tweaky, but it was nice because I was doing it from scratch, and I could position these where I wanted, you know, with a little play, given how much space you have on um, the, the tensioners, right? So I could kind of play with that a little bit. I finally got it where I wanted, made a little template for it, brrr, went around, off we go, all right? So then all, we, all I have to do on the top is I put in a little, um, a little piece of isolation rubber, the same orangey stuff, okay, the same orangey stuff, um, on top of the U-channel, and then I put this guy on top, right? So it's, you know, like so, right? If that's, that can kind of make sense. All right, so here's this, and then this just sits on top of that, right? You can kind of see the piece of it right there, all right? A little better? Yeah? Okay. So that works great. And then, of course, we have, um, you know, the wiring. And like I said, I like to use um, little lugs here so I can take things apart. Got a nice heavy-duty, uh, you know, quarter-inch style jack over here. And to get rim shots, you need a, uh, a rim sensor, all right? So there's a rim sensor down here, which is just another piezo that's sort of uh, glued right to the frame, right? So this, this um, has double sticky tape holding it on, onto the shell, and then there's uh, some silicone, like glue, rubber, whatever you want to call it, um, that holds everything down, okay? Sometimes the, the vibration of the wires can give you false triggers, so I'll put a little glob of, of silicone on here in various spots just to keep it nice and isolated. So that all gets wired into the jack, um, you know, and that goes off, of course, to your module, right? So you have a, a Roland, Yamaha, a triggered box, you know, whatever the heck it is, okay? Beautiful. Now, as wonderful as that is, you might also say, well, I want to make um, a conversion, you know, some, some people call these stealth drums, okay, or a stealth conversion. So I go out and I just have regular already purchased drums because I, you know, I don't want to bother finishing with this. You know, maybe you're not like a woodworking kind of person. So you just want to take something that already exists and convert it. Good and bad. It saves you some work, but there are a couple other little tweaky things you might have to do. So here's a little snare, right? This is a little piccolo, piccolo snare that I picked up. I decided to do a conversion on this. Uh, thought it would be a nice snare, okay? So this is, you know, right off the shelf, so to speak. Well, I got rid of a few pieces of hardware, like you don't need the snare strainer. So I just took that off and just put a couple of, you know, machine screws in here to hide the holes, basically. Um, got a mesh head for it, of course, and, uh, you know, a rubber rim, right? Because you don't want to be whacking directly on, on the... Um, on a, you know, a triple flange range, uh, uh, excuse me, triple flanged rim, that would be awful loud. So um, and the rubber keeps that down. But in any case, now the problem is, you know, you can't take that little bar that I have, that spar, and position it wherever you want. If you want unless you want to drill more holes in here, right? If you want to kind of piggyback on some of the stuff that already exists, some of the holes for, you know, like this kind of stuff, lugs, whatever, you're sort of stuck. So you need some other way of, of moving this guy into the perfect position, right? 
So what we see here, right, here's the spar again. It's got the same kind of isolation. But there is, right, right in the center, you can see this, this machine screw here. It looks like a machine screw. This is, in fact, a foot that goes on furniture. Okay? So there's this, you see this black thing over here. Um, and there's just two nuts, one on either side of, the, of this little spar, that allow you to screw this thing up and back, back and forth, and right to the top of it, right to the top of that, is the cone, right? The cone and the piezo. So now you have some ability, right? The spar can be, you know, moved back and forth depending on where, the, you know, the, the lugs and so, so forth are. So you can't just do a direct connection like I did on the other one, you know? Um, so having this guy here allows you some latitude. You can move this up and down, you know, an inch plus or minus um, total. So you have, you have uh, some latitude there, all right? But now you do this for, you know, your toms and everything, and you've got a kit that's actually electronic, but it would look like a normal kit, all right? I was never a huge fan of that because one of the things I really liked um, about, about using the electronics is that the, you know, the size of this has nothing to do with the sound, the pitch. So I didn't have to have big floor toms. I could just use you know, an 8-inch, a 10-inch tom, whatever, and it could be whatever I wanted. So I could, I could have four, six, eight toms, right? And um, not take up a ton of space, right? So that's nice. Takes up less space in your studio. If you're going to schlep this around town, it's a lot easier, you know. Um, and like I said, you know, people would look at this from a distance and they would say, oh, those are just, um, you know, concert towns. They wouldn't necessarily know um, any different. It looks like real drums. And now when it comes to uh, cymbals, you have some options for cymbals. You know, uh, the companies do make cymbals. You know, the, the typical ones are sort of, a, you know, a black plastic. But you can always go out and do a conversion on, on uh, real cymbals, right? Of course, again, you don't really care what they sound like. So you can buy some really cheap entry-level sorts of cymbals, um, attach a, uh, a dampening material to it. So one way to do that is just get sheet vinyl. And there is a, uh, a kind of tape called KRT, Killer Red Tape. It's a very, very sticky double-sided tape. Uh, you can just search the net for that. Just look for, like I said, killer red tape. And you can put that along sort of radially on the symbol. Take your um, uh, vinyl sheeting, clear vinyl sheeting, just run that around underneath, and that'll, you know, completely damp it. So you hit that with a stick, it's just going to go tunk. You're not going to get a symbol, a nice symbol sound out of it. And then you put your uh, piezo on there. You have to come up with some little sort of pigtail affair for a jack that's a little bit, you know, less clean, but you can do it. It looks like real symbols. Or another thing you can do, which would not re necessarily require the damping, would be to get one of those practice symbols, you know, the kind that have 8 million holes drilled in them. Um, same thing. You can mount a sensor to it and off you go. So, you know, those are relatively quiet to begin with, right? They're practice symbols. So you can use that and have the whole thing pretty well set up, okay? If you want to, you can do a little bit of commercial stuff, you know, like you might go out and buy a company's hi-hat, right? Hi-hat stand with cymbals, because that's a, that can be a little tweaky, right? Same thing maybe for a kick drum. You might make a stealth kick drum. You might go with a beaterless. I really like the beaterless. Um, but the rest of the kit, like I said, looks like real drums, okay? Any size you want, really cool. So that's the, that's the key, right? You just you just need two two of these guys, right? You need one with the cone for the the, the basic batter head. You need another one for the uh, rim, okay? You know the rim trigger, and you're good to go. All right, you can get as fancy or as weird as you want with this thing. Um, you want to do a wrap? Do a wrap. Right? You want to spray paint the thing? You want to put graffiti on it? It's up to you. Okay. The nice thing is, you know, you're not into it really heavy. And one of the really cool things about making your own stuff, a lot of people don't think about this, but it's true. When you make your own stuff, you're never going to be afraid of it. What do I mean by that? 
if it breaks, you built it. You know exactly how it works. So there's never any trepidation. Like, you know, if you buy something and, it, and it's not working right, it's intermittent, okay, something's a little funky, you're always a little shy. At least most people are a little shy to go in there and start taking things apart. You know, I'm just going to wreck it more. Well, how are you going to wreck it more? You built it. You know exactly what went into it. So, yeah, you want to go in here and change it later? Sure, fine, whatever. You know, when I did this, uh, this set anyway, I had some extra shell left around. You know, I had some of this stuff. So I just made myself a couple of uh, extra concert toms, you know, a couple of different lengths. Why not? You know, the hardware is cheap enough. Um, off you go, right? So experiment a little bit with this, right? Do a stealth, you know, a conversion, or your own, you know, to your taste, okay? Nice custom. Have a ball. Have fun. A little bit of science, a little bit of engineering, a little bit of art. They all come together, and it spells... F-U-N. Fun. Later.